Welcome everybody. In an impromptu sort of way, I'd like to try to describe why a punctured torus is homotopy equivalent or the same shape as a figure eight to a topologist. So let's start with our torus. And it's, it's hollow. So it's, it's formed from a piece of paper that we rolled up to a cylinder and then, and then wrapped the cylinder together to get a hollow torus. The inside mm -hmm. is, is completely open. And by puncturing a torus, I just mean removing a single point. So boop, go in there and, and pick out a single point. Right. And then what you could do is you could sort of grow this hole, all right? Make this hole bigger and bigger. So maybe I'll, let's try out my notability skills. You know, I'm, I make this hole bigger, so, and then I keep growing this hole, okay? And sort of, where does this process stop? What's the shape that I get down to when I keep retracting this hole as much as I can? Okay, so, <clears throat> keep going, where does it end? What we're gonna do is we're gonna start with our same torus but consider it before it was punctured, all right? So let's, let's promote this back to a full complete torus, right? Let's consider it before it's punctured. And I wanna draw this torus in a new way. I wanna draw this torus as a piece of paper. So I'll put this equal sign because I'm, I'm thinking of this torus as the same thing as this piece of paper, but I wanna identify the top with the bottom, all right? And then, so what, what do I get when I identify the top with the bottom? I get a cylinder. And then once I have a cylinder, what I do, I identify the right side with the left side to get a torus. So once I've identified the top with the bottom, I identify the right side with the left side. Let me draw these arrows better. Okay, so what I mean by this is when I identified the top with the bottom, I identified that point with here, this point with here, this point, this point with here. And then when I identified the right and the left, I identify this point there, this point here, etc. this point here. And that's taking my piece of paper, gluing it to get a cylinder, and then gluing the opposite sides again to get a torus. All right. So the reason why this is valuable is now when we puncture our torus, we're going to think of puncturing it not in this representation, but in this representation, okay? So allow yourself to think of the torus as a square with opposite ends identified. All right, once I puncture it here, let's, let's get a sequence of homotopy equivalences going. Inside the square, I can make the puncture bigger. I still have the same identifications. All right, so um, you know, I, I should I should sort of say that everything besides that puncture is, of course, filled in, right? So all of this is filled in, and I won't draw it on the next picture, but but all that is still filled in. You know, I, I keep making this puncture bigger and bigger. This edge on the left is identified with the one on the right. This edge on the top is identified with the one on the bottom. Finally, I just get down to the square wire frame with nothing on the inside. The top is still identified with the bottom and the right is still identified with the left. So let's, let's glue the top to the bottom. So when I glue the top to the bottom, the wire on the top becomes the same as the wire on the bottom. So that's why I've just drawn it once. And then the edge on the left becomes this, becomes this loop. I don't know how you think about it. Okay, so I'm thinking of folding. I start with the top and the bottom of the wireframe. I fold it down. And then the loop on the edge on the left became this loop. And then take the top and the bottom, fold them down, the edge on the right it also becomes a loop. All right, 
So I can get rid of this single arrow here because I've already identified the top and the bottom, but I still need to identify the right and the left. And then when I do that, the right and the left become just one loop because the right and the left have been glued together. But this edge here becomes a loop on its own. Okay, because that edge got folded back on itself. All right, and this is our figure eight. You know, that's the same as this figure, um, figure eight. One loop on the left, one loop on the right. So that was my attempt at drawing in an impromptu fashion how a punctured torus is the same shape to a topologist as a figure eight. I should say, if, if you think you've never seen anything like this before, where the top is the same as the bottom and the right is the same as the left, you have if you've played Pac-Man. Because when you play Pac-Man, you're going through the level. And when you walk through this wall, you come out the other side. And that's the sense in which the top is identified with the bottom. And similarly, when you play Pac-Man, when you walk through this wall, you come out this side. And that's the sense in which the right is identified with the left. So Pac-Man, in fact, you're playing on a non-punctured torus. Any public questions? Thanks. <laughs>